Hi, everyone. Welcome to SUSACON 2022. Um, Brian and Craig here. This is the demo portion for tutorial BP-1299 that we had done earlier related to SUSE Enterprise Server and the new deployment methodologies we have with something um, we've released now called SLE Micro. Um, and we wanted to kind of run you through a new management tool that we've introduced. It's called Cockpit, and it gives you a way to manage the endpoint systems, all these SLE Micro systems that you deploy. And um, this is available for all of your nodes. It does need to be installed, the Cockpit, um, I don't know if I want to call it an application, but the the agent, the agent probably. needs to be installed and available um, at least on some node that you plan on logging into. So you'll notice at the top, it's basically when you install Cockpit as a service or agent, it runs on port 9090. And so you'll access that port in your browser, authenticate, and you'll be driven to this particular default sort of dashboard screen that you see. Um, a little bit of information here is given to you about registering and you know how to connect and do certain things. And you can get rid of this. You don't need to see this all the time. Um, so I can just X remove that and kind of get a better look at my dashboard. But this sort of gives you, go ahead, Craig. Quick question for you. So this, this web in, instance, that needs to run on a system someplace. It needs to run on a system someplace. But only one. Only one. And then it will connect over SSH to all of your other systems to gather data and perform the different management Perfect. tasks that it's going to allow you to do. That sounds good. Sorry to interrupt the. No, it's all good. Please. We we want to we want to we we definitely want to cover everything we can to help explain what this thing does. Now, this is our first iteration of of the management tool of like this. Uh, you know, expect to see new features later. Please give us uh, feedback on things you think would be helpful, things that are that are missing that are would be essential to you and your administrative tasks that you do daily. But and from the this, use cases and the use cases you're trying to solve with those new features, exactly. And, and the goal that's the key element. And, and the, the sort of the, the goal in mind was that if you have a lot of these sleep micros and all these endpoints, particularly in some kind of IoT scenario, you're likely not going to have keyboards and monitors on all of them. And so, how do you get to them to manage them and and make changes and that kind of thing? Do any kind of monitoring. Um. So nice little login dashboard from here. You'll be able to see things like um, details and history of your CPU memory utilization. I can just quickly click on that. You can kind of monitor and see what's what's going on real time. The same thing for system information and configuration. Little, little details on the hardware um, that might be important for you to know, particularly if you're trying to determine how much memory is in your box. Um, review those kinds of things. I'll come back again. I can do some time change uh, information here. And then lastly, I can reboot or shut down my system from this screen. So a couple Kinda of handy handy. Little, little features. Now, in order to operate against other systems, so Again, we've connected to the first of our Steam Micros. If you had 50 or 100, you're going to want to make sure that they're available to you in this dropdown. And you can see here's the edit host or the add new host link. And as we try to, depending on how you do authentication, you may need to have um, SSH keys that you leverage for SSH, you know, passwordless logins to all of your systems. And when you need that, you need to go all the way over here under sessions and add all of your SSH keys. And then those will be available for you when you add new hosts to be able to type in the, the host IP address or name, the username that you're going to SSH as and click on add and connect. And it'll pick your keys um, that are appropriate for that particular host. So let's go back. We're logged in as root onto the main 
the main um, sleep micro system that we're working as, um, you'll notice that we talked about the overview screen. From a log perspective, we can monitor your um, got you know the logging's going on on the server. This is the journal CTL to look at the journal CTL with a particular filter applied. And that's um, pretty cool. Yeah, to be able to to get down to that one little piece that you're interested in, particularly in a troubleshooting aspect. Correct. You know, it's one thing if when all is well, you might not necessarily go and look at this, but when things aren't working well, you can come in here and take a look at the current boot, previous boot, last 24 hours, um, the different kinds of priority for for a particular error or or um, a warning message. And then under filter, you can choose all kinds of choices here and even specify your own journal CTL command um, that you want to search with. Journal CTL, very, very powerful. Been around for a while and not a yeah. lot of people are aware how powerful it is and what you can do with it. It's kind of fun to see it exposed in this interface. And it's nice when you can you can select a particular unit that you're searching for. Yep. So particularly when you're doing a new installation, of uh, uh, some kind of application or service, being able to track just the things related to it using yep. the um, the unit option there is, is is very helpful. Now, from a networking perspective, I can come in here and see that I've got an ETH zero and it's set for DHCP, but I can modify my networking from within this tool, and I can even add individual items to this as well. Um, so I can change my current setting from DHCP to static. And so this gives you the ability to do some kind of manipulation, particularly when most of the time when you first build a system, particularly some of these um, IoT devices that are self-installed. So if you're leveraging the self-installation options, right. sometimes if you don't specify DHCP will be there by default. If you don't like that, come in here and make that change, modify the routing and DNS that you would need to do in order for you to set up a static environment. You can manage users that are logged into the system or able to log into the system. And you can see services and things that are listed, but you're not really able to do a lot of manipulation. You can just see what their status is and what they're currently um, set to do upon reboot or not, but you're not really able to come in here and manipulate them in this particular window. Right. But you always have under the tools menu, the ability to click on terminal and jump right to a terminal prop. And of course, from here, <clears throat> you can do whatever it is you need to do to modify something that's not initially available in this, um, in this window without having to hold on to the, your SSH keys because you've all got them sitting in a repository in this tool. Yep. Kind of cap uh, kind of a cool capability here. Yep, easy, quick start. And you're not fishing around for your SSH tool, wherever it is, right. based on what machine you're logged on to, right? So pick up a tablet, pick up whatever. There you, you go. don't have to have that on there. Just click, go to this IP address, port 9090, and terminal access to all of your nodes. Chromebook. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Chromebook, but may or may not have all of the tools necessary to, to do what you need to do. Right, exactly. And un under the drop down, you'll notice I can select one of my other hosts. This is another host that I have available. I'm using the, um, the, the user SUSE to log in with, but I used root for the other one. And, and notice over here on the far right, I am currently logged in with administrative access privileges via the cockpit portal. If I click that, I can choose to run under a more limited access approach. And this is sort of uh, analogous to when you log into a, a, your system for the whatever, first time, hundredth time, what have you. Do you always log in as root or do you tend to log in as a less privileged user and then you sudo for all the things that you need, more of a best practices approach? And this is sort of a way to get there, doing it from within this interface. Um, but you can switch back and forth just like you can 
do at the command line and move back and forth. You have the same capabilities in terms of management and manipulation for this other node as you did for the one you were logged into. You have the overview logs, networking, same functionalities available to you, even getting login access to the terminal. Pretty powerful. Yeah. And it's all uh, delivered through a browser. It's all done you know, via this one um, server as the cockpit portal. Um, yeah, and that's really about it. It's pretty simple. Um, I mean, you can to... set up multiple users that can access that cockpit portal, correct? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Now there are some, there are some um, particular URLs we thought would be handy for you to have available or just at least show you where they are, give you an idea what's out there. There is an administration guide um, that's available as you'd expect on the SUSE website. Um, this is for the 5.2 SLE Micro. And, and then there's just under www.susa.com slash documentation. Correct. Yeah. Thank you yep. for that. Yeah. And the deployment guide is also here. And it's real important to take some time, maybe peruse through a few of the things, particularly when you want to look at some of these, the pre-built image deployments, leveraging this first time boot kind of idea where you're you're deploying images or you're deploying machines that are being self-installed with configuration files. And this walks you through, talks you through what that's all about, how that's going to look, how you're going to get access to it. Um, if you looked at our session, we did a we did a slide on this, this idea of, of, a, um, of a tool called Ignition and now Combustion. We've got some really good documentation on just what Combustion is. And this is on the Open SUSE site. Um, all of this, you can, you know, stop and pause the video, write down that URL, go to that URL. Um, all that's available online, easy to get access to. And then lastly, when you've seen enough and you're ready to play, Absolutely. go get some eval copies. We've got the Media One for the C Micro OS, so you can install from a standard uh, ISO image. We've also got a raw image. I think there's one for both x86, 64, and yes. And this is the self-installer one here at the bottom. So these two are the self-install, which um, leverage that combustion approach where it's looking for a config file upon first boot to read in all of its information, like what's the root password, um, what kind of services do I want installed? What kind of configuration do I want? Um, and if you don't get that config file right, when you boot, you'll have a system that you that runs, but you can't log into it because you never set the root password. So it's really important. That's a handy hint. <laughs> That's a handy <laughs> one. So you need to come back. Be sure you make sure that this combustion script is available. And we give you, in this website, it tells you um, here what the, some of the minimums you want to have in your config file to set the root password so that when it does come up, you can actually get access to it, log into it. Or if you want to add an SSH key in there, you, you can do that as well. So sets a password and copies the public key for you to, to do passwordless logins. So whatever works for you, this is a great, this is a great little starter script to have available. Yep. And you'll notice that right off the bat, Almost one of the first things that's being done is we're starting network services. And that network services allows all the rest of this stuff to work. And it allows you to leverage things that may not be local to the box, but, but you know, on a, on a proxy server someplace. Anyway, all this is available um, on the web. So just go get a copy of it and take a look. Absolutely. Again, Any other thoughts, Craig, on the, you know, the, the cockpit the, on this session? The, the cockpit? I, I like the the overall tool. I think it's one that if you were doing it at large scale, I think you'd be looking for other tools. And so that's one of those things that I would always throw SUSE Manager into the mix. Yeah. Keep in yeah. mind, SUSE Manager can can work with the SLE Micro pieces. I like this tool for some edge pieces. I, I definitely see a use case uh, where this tool fits. And 
keep in mind, this is just another methodology for deploying a Linux operating system. It may not be the best methodology for your use case, but it's always good to have these uh, tools, these concepts sitting there and you're going, you run into a, an edge use case or you're going, holy crap, this will work just spectacular for this use case. Yeah. If you don't slides for SAP, a whole different world, a whole different approach to, to dropping down that operating system. And from a management perspective, this is, you know, it's certainly not SUSE manager, Craig, like you had mentioned. Correct. It doesn't do patching. It doesn't do security analysis and vulnerability but scanning. For that, that those headless units using SLE Micro, I think this is spectacular. Yeah. And if all you need is this little bit of access and this kind of um, management, if this works for you, great. If there's something missing, it. let us know what that is. And yep. we'd be glad to, to we'll forward that, that on to the product managers. Yep. Yep. That's something else to go do. Yep. That's it. Cool. Guys, uh, hopefully those that are, are watching the demo here and made it made it to this part of it, I hope SUSACON is going well for you and you're learning lots. Yeah. Have a wonderful day. See you guys.